In this edition of Vinyl Hall, I've got a couple traditional metal albums. I've got a whole lot of death metal, a little bit of doom as well. So you know what? You should stay tuned. First up is the second EP from American power metal band Adamantis. This is the Damon Strain, released in 2022 by Cruz del Sur Music. Speaking of which, this does look to be their debut on that specific record label, having previous releases put out independently, so congrats to the band. So Adamantis is certainly in the epic power metal camp, though with occasional folk metal strains. Uh, vocals to me seem like they have a bit of a Todd LaTorre quality, uh, notably in the more powerful high note moments. Though maybe throw a pinch of Eric Adams in there as well. As for the production on this EP, it is fantastic. Adamantis might be a lesser known band, but they sound big on this record for sure. Vinyl variant for this one is Classic Black. Uh, with some cool labels. There and there. We also get an insert with lyrics and some notes on the back. Do have some favorites as I always do. Uh, top of that list is Storm the Walls, an amazing opener. Also really dig Thundermark. Uh, there's a, a track on the B side. It is epic length to put it mildly. It's called House Carpenter, the Damon's Lover. It's really decent too with its numerous passages, its occasional clean guest female vocals from Krista Sion of Dialith. Also some hints of Iron Maiden and some of the guitar melodies and definitely some good variety in Jeff Stark's singing. There is a music video for the track Storm the Walls, which I recommend checking out. It is at the Nawatham Full Albums YouTube channel. That's N-W-O-T-H-M. So knowing the band had a full-length release right before this, it's likely that I'll be tracking that one down and giving it a listen, especially if this EP is any indicator of the quality of their remaining catalog. You should check this one out. Next is a third studio album from British death doom band Consecration. This is Sinus, released in 2022 by Redefining Darkness Records. So yes, this is Consecration's third album, continuing with their melancholic death doom that occasionally shows their influences from early peaceful bands such as Paradise Lost and My Dying Bride, but also a modern heavy trudge along the lines of, say, Hooded Menace. Overall, I'd say it leans a bit more death than doom, but there's plenty of the latter in there for sure. Uh, this is also the band's first album on Redefining Darkness Records, which is really cool. Again, congrats to you guys. A uh, vinyl variant for this one is Charnel House Splatter. It is limited to 150 copies. Uh, the other variant is Ground Ashes Gray. It's also limited to 150 copies. Uh, there is also a nice booklet here, a four-page booklet. Fantastic artwork. We've got some lyrics. Great picture of the band. More of that fantastic artwork. Really fantastic. Uh, I do have some favorites on here, of course. Ground to Ashes, A Cremulation, also The Charnel House, and A Sentient Haunting. I especially love The Charnel House. I would check that one out first. Also, Ground to Ashes has guest vocals by Dave Ingram of Benediction. I heard him straight away. Great to hear him, of course. There is a visualizer video available for The Charnel House, as well as a lyric video for the track The Dweller in the Tumulus. I would definitely check out both of those. They are at the Consecration Doom 666 YouTube channel. Um, I should also mention that the vinyl is missing three tracks from the digital, cassette, and CD versions. Uh, that would be Embrace of Perpetual Mourning, A Dying Wish, and In Loving Abandonment. Uh, the last of two are instrumentals. Uh, admittedly, there are moments when a particular riff does stick around longer than necessary, but barring that nitpick, there is some fine death doom here. Definitely worth the spin. Next up is a compilation album of metal bands, a few of which you might know. This is L'Amour Rocks, released in 1987 by Mercenary Records. So here we've got some classic metal, some crossover thrash, a little power metal, and definitely a hard rock track at the end. Uh, some known and unknown bands here for sure, including an early version of Wrathchild America, then known as Wrathchild before the name conflict with the British band of the same name. Uh, the track is Armed to Deliver. Doesn't quite sound like the Wrathchild America we got to know later on, but Brad Divins is on vocals and he's certainly recognizable as a result of that. 
Uh, funny here is the band Jet Black. The track is called Red Dawn. Uh, their name and image might make you think it's a glam metal band, but they really are way more New York thrash. Uh, but their guitarist, Christy Majors, would go on to be in an actual glam metal band of note, such being Pretty Boy Floyd, so that's kind of interesting. Uh, vinyl variant on this one is Classic Black, as you would expect in 1987, on the Mercenary labels there. Of course, they do have some favorites. Uh, that Rothschild America track is pretty great. Also, Matriarch with Red Dawn, and Attacker with Eminon. That is the Attacker you're probably familiar with. Um, I definitely think this comp would be right at home with other metal comps going back to the early to mid-80s, such as the Metal Massacre series, as well as those from Megaforce Records. Um, it's not an entirely common album to find out there, but if you run into it, you should probably pick it up, particularly if you collect comps from the lesser-known 80s metal and hard rock bands, like me. Uh, definitely had a lot of fun with this one. Check it out. Next up is the first full-length album from American death metal band Frozen Soul. This is Crypt of Ice, released in 2021 by Century Media Records. So the whole cold theme throughout this band's name, the album name, and some of the tracks is by no means irrelevant because this old-school death metal is definitely served up icy and brutal, with tempos generally ranging from slow to mid-range. Uh, vocals have both a brutality and a groove to them, along with some sludgy and meaty riffs, many of which totally bang-worthy, and even with moments of doom. Uh, the chorus of the title track is a prime example of that. Also, the part towards the middle of Encased in Ice is clearly supposed to be someone getting stabbed. Uh, it is, shall we say, very realistic sounding, but it's short enough to not take you out of the track, though I might have put it at the end of the album instead just to be safe. Maybe that's a minor nitpick. Still, it is definitely an unexpected turn the first time around hearing this. Uh, vinyl variant for this one is Baby Blue. It is limited to 500 copies. Same on the back. As for favorites, definitely the song Crypt of Ice. Great song. Also, I love Beat to Dust, as well as Grave Digger. There are music videos for the title track, as well as Encased in Ice. Both are killer. Uh, maybe start with Crypt Device first, as the track is a little catchier and the video is a little bit more interesting to watch. Either way, check them both out at the Century Media YouTube channel. So, reviews out there on this one are rather mixed. It seems some can't get past some of the bolt thrower worship that's going on, and they, as a result, they dismiss the album. I think that's a bit harsh and overgeneralized because Crypt of Ice is more than just a semi-familiar vocal style. It's also a crushing collection of tracks with, yes, more than a nod to the old school, definitely. Uh, for me, it was enough to make me go out and get there in case an ICP, which we're going to talk about in a future episode of Vinyl Hall. So definitely check back in for that. Next is a live album from American power thrash band Flotsam and Jetsam. This is Live in Phoenix. Originally released in CD in 2005 and now reissued in 2019 by Cleopatra Records. So the original release had 13 tracks, but likely to fit the concert on a single record, Cleopatra decided to include only 8 of those tracks. But definitely the best 8 of the lot. Uh, the safe assumption here is that it's more concentrated on classic flots than the full version with only 4 out of 13 tracks falling into that category. It was recorded at the Bash on Ash in Phoenix, Arizona, July 18th, 2003. I have to say, this is an odd period of time for this band, especially one to capture. Um, uh, this is many years after their classic heyday, and it's over a decade before their de facto comeback with their last three records. So, 2005 is pretty much a dead era for them. Maybe that's just my opinion, but maybe not. Uh, maybe I would have pulled from either very modern shows or very classic era shows, so I'm going to definitely say that. Vinyl variant for this one is red. It is limited to 300 copies. There we go. I can hold things up. Favorites on this one, and I'm going to pick the classics here, of course. Hard on You, as well as The Master Sleeps and Hammerhead. Yes, the classics. What do you want from me? Anyways, no music videos for this one, though a number of users on YouTube did attend this show and did post clips. So you can check those out to get an idea of the sound quality and the overall performance. 
Uh, speaking of which, the sound quality in this is better than passable, but don't expect impressive production on this one. Uh, think of it as a fairly good bootleg. Yeah, I'm going to go with that. Uh, vocals are decent, but not up to studio album quality. Eric is straining quite a bit at times, though he's definitely holding his own throughout. Uh, the set list is overall less than satisfying, I gotta say. I do feel that a more recent show with more of their stronger material from early and recent eras would have been the better choice. This album is fine, but it could have been better. Next is a reissue of the 13th studio album from British gothic metal band Paradise Lost. This is Tragic Idol, originally released in 2012, but now reissued in 2022 by Svart. And yes, it's really hard to see this cover because it's shiny as all heck. I'll do the best I can. There it is. So it's fair to say that Tragic Idol musically follows their previous albums, such being Faith Divides Us, Death Unites Us. Uh, more that gothic doom metal mixed with some catchy melodic moments that often skitter into, shall we say, accessible territory. Uh, the songs are often big sounding, but without many of the death metal trappings found in their early work. Uh, vinyl variant on this one is Clear Blue Marble. There you are. It also comes in a gatefold sleeve with this metallic lamination that makes it really hard to see. <laughs> Likewise, the back cover, which looks really great if you have it in certain light. Uh, favorites on this one are Crucify, uh, Fear of Impending Hell, In This We Dwell, as well as the title track. Uh, there are also music videos for both Fear of Impending Hell as well as Honesty and Death. Both are great tracks. The, the mellower track, Fear of Impending Hell, really shines, and Nick just sounds incredible on it. Check out both videos at the Century Media YouTube channel. As for me, I was really struck by this album. Uh, this is actually the first time I'd heard it, amazingly enough, outside of live versions of some of these tracks. Although more recent material might be a bit heavier overall, I think if you enjoy some of the bigger and moodier moments on those records, I would definitely recommend Tragic Idol. I've been spinning it a lot lately and really digging it. Next up is the first full-length album from Belgian death thrash band Schizophrenia. This is Recollections of the Insane, released in 2022 by Redefining Darkness Records. So very tight performance here, along with more aggression, as well as some improved song structure. Although that Voices EP they did wasn't exactly a slouch either. A number of fast riffs and some memorable choruses are also here. Uh, some Morbid Angel type moments as well, especially in the track Monolith, which brings this release more into the death metal realm at times, which of course I dig. Uh, vinyl variant for this one is Silver Marble, limited to 100 copies. Uh, I picked this up at the band's official merch shop, which also has other variants available. Uh, this one definitely took a while due to supply chain issues, which is why I didn't discuss it sooner. Uh, we also get an insert here with lyrics, picture of the band, some more lyrics. Favorite songs on this one, definitely Divine Immolation, super strong opening track. Also Sea of Sorrow and Souls. Of Retribution. Uh, sea of Sorrow, by the way, is not an Alice in Chains cover song, just in case you were wondering. Pretty cool song, though. Definitely one of my favorites. Uh, music video for the track Divine Immolation, as well as another one for Cranial Disintegration. Both great videos, both great tracks. See them both at the Schizophrenia Band YouTube channel. Uh, you might remember a bit back that I had some positive things to say about that Voices EP, which came out before this. Uh, that was good, but this is a real step up in both songwriting and playing. If you dug the EP, you definitely need to get this album, because I am definitely a fan now. Next is the 11th studio album from Swedish melodic death metal band Arch Enemy. This is Deceivers, released in 2022 by Century Media Records. So I'm going to confess something here. This is the first Arch Enemy album I've ever bought. I mean, I've heard the band before through other people, but never actually got around to buying a record from them. Um, I do know the band has changed a little bit over the years. You don't need to remind me in the comments. I already know that. But since I don't have that history with them, that's not where I'll be coming from. So just know that going in. Uh, basically, I bought this album largely on the strength of the singles. And to be frank, I really dug it. So this is certainly melodic death metal, though I'd stress the melodic here. Uh, Elisa goes between death growls and clean vocals, both of which are highly effective. 
Uh, throw in some shred along with some thrashy riffs and some clear power metal sensibilities. And it all comes together in this very big album. Uh, kudos as well to the production, which knows how to bank on the bigness of sound here. Uh, the drums in particular are thunderous on this thing. Um, also, since I do have some familiarity with the early Gothenburg sound, we're getting some of that here as well. I definitely hear it. You'll hear it as well. Uh, vinyl variant for this one is Transparent Light Blue. Uh, there are a number of variants. This is the one I bought. There you are. Also, a uh, booklet here. Pretty nice booklet. We've got pictures of the band, as well as some lyrics throughout. Just give you a quick glance of those. And there, and some great artwork on the back. As for favorites, uh, In the Eye of the Storm is killer, also Sunset Over the Empire and House of Mirrors. Uh, there are music videos for the tracks Deceiver Deceiver, House of Mirrors, Handshake with Hell, Sunset Over the Empire, In the Eye of the Storm, and The Watcher. Um, of those six video tracks, it really is a draw between Sunset Over the Empire and In the Eye of the Storm. But check out all six of those for sure. They are at the Arch Enemy YouTube channel. So I know some classic fans of this band have issues with some of the power metal adoption, uh, let alone clear strains of classic heavy metal in modern Arch Enemy. Um, in some ways, it's kind of similar to what creators doing these days. Kind of. Um, ultimately, I don't have a problem with it. In fact, I'd like to check out some of the other albums with Elisa, having already been familiar with the eras of the other singers. Uh, feel free to recommend another Arch Enemy album to me, uh, based on what I'm saying here. I, I always love uh, recommendations, as many people know, so yeah, definitely drop those in the comments. Otherwise, yeah, great album. Really enjoying this. And that's it for another episode of Vinyl Hall. Remember, as always, to like, subscribe, and share. Those are the three ways that are kind of like getting paid, but kind of not. But I do appreciate them. people do them, so definitely remember that. Also, let me know in the comments which of these albums you liked, which albums you dislike. Also, music suggestions to me. Maybe you heard a band here that reminds you of another band entirely along those lines. You think I dig, or maybe there are other albums from these same bands that you think I would dig. Definitely let me know that in the comments as well. Other than that, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.